Hi, and Jonathan Knight, and this is B Movie Madness. The movie I'm going to be talking about today, well, first of all, welcome back. I'm really, really, truly excited to be talking about the release I'm talking about, well, today. Um, but before I talk about it, or you can just read the title above, let's cue the intro now. back thank you for continuing to watch um the reason why i'm excited for this release is because i've become uh, a fan of the director due to two previous releases that the director did joe sherlock and those are uh bloody red lips of blood and um crimson heather and lust of the vampire hookers that's what we drive in. I was a big fan of these, so I was I'm really excited to talk about today's release. If you want to check out my reviews of these, you can check them out above. You know, I'll put them up above. But what what is the one I'm going to be talking about today? Well, the one pump today is another SOV drive-in release, and that's for Joe Sherlock's Monster in the Garage and Zombie Love Slave. I'm trying to get a good non glare of that. Um, much like the um, other release, um, you can watch it in drive-in style, or you can watch them the, the movies individually. I highly, highly, highly recommend sticking to the drive-in style because it makes the stuff more fun. Um, Tony packs it with a lot of drive-in commercials, um, trailers for Joe's other movies, including the movies that are on the disc. Um, there, So you get like about a half hour of drive-in stuff before the movie and between the uh, movie. Um, some really cool drive-in stuff, too. Um, my personal favorite, and I might have mentioned in the Hella Review, is the hot dog commercial, the erotic, I call it the erotic hot dog commercial, uh, with the hot dog talking to the little boy, saying, I'm just going to slide right into the bun, you know. I, I love that. I've seen that at driving a couple of times, and it just makes me laugh each time. So there's a lot of cool driving stuff in here, you know, candy commercials, um, intermission, and all that. So if you watch this, please do yourself a favor and watch it in driving style. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the films individually i'm not going to kind of group them together and give you an individual plot synopsis and all that um what is monster in the garage about well monster in the garage is about an alien spacecraft that crashes lands on earth and an intergalactic blood sucker on board takes refuge in steve's messy garage slowly making lunch meat out of his friends um yeah pretty much it's it's an alien crashes the earth and takes refuge in a, a guy's messy garage while he's having a party there is like a minor like slub pot, sub, uh, subplot about um uh men in black who um one of this this like farmer witnesses the alien spacecraft and they kidnap him it's only like a minor subplot you only see a little bit of that but so but most of the film is this monster goes into the garage and you know they're, while they're having a party people go out to the garage and they get eaten um, first of all, what did I like about, well, first of all, I actually really, really, really enjoyed Monster in the Garage. Um, the thing I liked most about it, it, first of all, I love seeing all the familiar actors that you see in a lot of Joe's movies. John Bowker, Dale Wilson, Rob Maracle, um, I'm forgetting one person, um, Tom Schaefer, um, rest in peace. Um, you, you, if you watch a few of Joe's movies, you see a lot of these people. Shannon is um, one of the, the lead actresses in this. You see a lot of these people, and I always like seeing familiar faces because it shows that one thing, the director is actually probably really fun to work with or easy to work with, and they just enjoy what they're doing. But And and that shows off in the movie. There is a lot of, um, you can tell that the people making this movie had a really good time making it. Um, the characters are a lot of fun. I particularly like um, John Bowker's character and the Shannon character, and um, Joe Sherlock plays a character in the movie called Gene. He's a lot of fun as well. I think everybody does a pretty decent job, you know, considering it's, you know, a uh, shot on video movie from the 90s that was made with friends and family. They do actually a really good job. Um, the monster in the garage itself is a black alligator-looking creature that's made of paper mache. It's very cheap, it's very cheesy, but it works for the movie that it's in. Um, there is um, some blood. There's um, two bloody kills. Um, the second kill involving a head is actually it was my favorite kill too. That I thought that one was a lot of fun. Um, despite on the commentary they track, they say that the second go 
uh, the way they wanted, I guess. But I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought that was cool. Um, the other things I liked is there's two sequences in this movie, where um, one of them is like a, a movie within a movie thing, where um, the main character Steve is watching a movie, and it's like an SOV version of the cantina scene from Star Wars. And I really like that sequence. I would actually like to see that into a movie. I think that would be really cool. That was a lot of fun. And there's a dream sequence where two skeleton creatures uh, attack Steve in his garage during a like, dream sequence. Because his garage is so messy that there's corpses, there's skeleton remains now. I don't know. I thought that was a lot of fun. And I like that he put that in the movie. Like, the cantina sequence is a little longer than it probably should be. Sorry about my phone. Um, but... I didn't have a problem with it. The movie itself is only 32 minutes, so it did add to the runtime. And it didn't take away anything. You know, if it was boring filler, I could understand having a problem with it. But it wasn't boring filler. It was its own little, neat little short film, but then a short film. Um, I thought that was cool. Um, and the ending was a lot of fun. I would actually like, I, I would like to see more of, like, the monster in the garage. Like, you know, not a sequel. More of the, like, maybe the Ant-Men and Black people. Um, I thought it was fun. This was actually made in 1997, so it probably won't be happening. <laughs> but, like I said, I would like to see more of that, and I would like to see the Cantina sequence extended into not maybe a, not maybe like a full-length movie, maybe like a, like this, like a 40-minute movie or something. But yeah, Monster in the Garage was a lot of fun. Um, there, you know, people I know people um, usually like no, there is no nudity in it. Sorry for the glare. But you get some monsters. You get you got a monster. You got some gore. You got some fun characters, you know. That's all you really need. I mean, boobs are nice though, but it was a lot of fun. Um, as for the next one, Zombie Love Slave. Even though I really enjoyed Monster from the Grudge, I absolutely fucking loved Zombie Love Slave. I'm a sucker for zombies, uh, mainly stuff from the 80s and 90s or 70s. You know, back then, zombie stuff now I'm not really into, but um, I'm really into um zombie stuff and in particular my favorite sov movie is um redneck zombies and this reminded me like zombie love say reminded me a lot of um todd sheets early work like his zombie rampage and his zombie bloodbath trilogy that this movie had the fun and charm of those movies and with a little bit of redneck zombies and a little bit of even the video did but what is zombie love slave about well zombie love slave is very very low on plot it's just about a bunch of undead who get more than dinner on, who have more than dinner on their minds as the back says it's really simple there's a few characters there's um and there's, there's zombies it's really just a simple 29 minute um gore fest but it works because um it knows what it is and just has fun with it i thought the zombie makeup was actually really well done um rob miracle who's also an actor in the movie he plays one of the zombies he was also in um monster in the garage he's the makeup guy i thought the makeup looked really good for um what probably was shot for very little um there's lots of gore it's much gorier than monster in the garage which had had gore this one has a lot more gore and it's just it, it's so much fun heads get smashed with shovels guts get ripped out people are just devoured it's so awesome i love like that old school sov gory charm that you know these movies had this movie has a lot of it and it packs really into a tight 20 minute nine minute runtime um there are some characters in the movie but you don't really get to know much about them. tom schaefer plays one it's always good to see tom schaefer john bowker has a little role in the movie um it's always great to see him um but it's all about the zombies and the zombies are like i said awesome um the, the movie i don't want to spoil the ending but it does end on a familiar note if you're a zombie movie fan You'll know how when when you, when you watch it, you'll know. But yeah, there's not much more I can say about this movie except for that. I just had a really great time watching this. It's the makeup, everything. It's just, ugh. um, and when you watch them together in the driving mode, it's even better. It's all it's 86 minutes all together with all the driving stuff in the two um, movies. Um, so, so even though I really enjoyed Crimson Heather and less of the um, vampire hookers, I keep on saying cannibal hookers. Even though I really enjoyed that double feature, I would have to say between the two so far, I enjoyed this one more. I really had a fun time with this movie, uh, both of these. Um, it was like the perfect double feature for me, SOV-wise. Um, driving stuff just added a little bit more sugar on top of it. Mm, it was so sweet. Um, as for the special features, let's see what the special features are. 
Again, you can watch it drive-in style or select a feature. I recommend the drive-in style, like I said before. There's audio commentaries on both movies. Um, on Monster in the Garage, it's Joe Sherlock and John Bowker. They talk about the production of the movie. The, the most interesting thing being that the lead actress, you know, who in the final film is um, Shannon, um, that played the fam female lead, was actually played by someone different in the original shoot, and they had to reshoot it nine months later for reasons. And when you see her in the movie, the female lead, that's a, that's the reshoots. So that's pretty interesting. And all about how they made the monster and all that. It's pretty cool. Um, and the one for Zombie Love Slave was Joe Sherlock, Dale Wilson. I hope I got the name right. Um, and Rob Miracle. And they talk about the production of that movie. And the one that's interesting about that movie is that I didn't mention it in the review itself. But that one actually has nudity and it. it. has boobs in it. And that footage of the boobs was actually shot by someone different who um, couldn't get anybody to help, I guess, finish the movie. So he gave it the name of the movie and that footage of the actress called Shannon, or not Shannon, um, Debbie D. Um, he gave it to Joe and Joe made a movie out of it. And those sequences are like fantasy sequences. So, so that's why there's nudity in that one. Um, and they go into detail about that and how they made the movie, how they did the special effects, you know, from condoms, jello, whatever they could do. Um, so that was a pretty, both commentary tracks are really interesting. I do highly, if you're not a commentary fan, um, then, you know, you probably won't like it. But if you're a commentary nut like me, then you'll definitely like the commentaries for this movie. Um, for both the movies. Um, there is two video interviews for Zombie Love Slave and Monster in the Garage where, uh, Monster Garage is eight minutes. Zombie Love Slave is four minutes. I believe it's just Joe Sherlock during Monster in the Garage, and he actually still has the Monster in the Garage paper mache um, puppet he made, or a co costume puppet that he made. He still has it. And I, but Zombie Love Slave has, I believe, Dale Wilson and Rob Miracle and John Bowker are interviewed during that one as well. And much like the commentary, it's just a less detailed than the commentary, but it's really cool, especially seeing the puppet or costume. Ah, fuck! I keep on messing that up. Uh, it's cool seeing that. Um, there is behind the scenes, I believe, for photo galleries and um, stuff for uh, Monster in the Garage and Zombie Love Slave. Um, I always like looking at the still galleries because you get the uh, inside look at just people making the movie. Um, there is a bonus short for Monster in the Car, which is about two minutes maybe short about these women beating the crap out of the monster. Yeah, fun. Um, there, you can watch the drive-in ads separately. You know, if you don't decide not to watch the drive-in style, you can watch all that stuff that's listed. Um, you can watch all the promos and all that. And then there is the trailer vault, which has, of course, the usual, um, SOV horror trailers. Um, there was one in there that I forgot that Tony was putting out, and I've never actually seen it. I don't want to spoil it, but it's a movie I've been interested in watching, and the trailer has me pumped. For it, um, so I was really glad to see them there. I always, I always check out the trailer selection to see if there's anything interesting that I don't recognize. But yeah, um, so do I recommend the SOV drive-in double feature of Monster in the Garage and Zombie Love Slave? Absolutely. If you're a fan of Joe, Sherlock, Joe Sherlock stuff, you probably have already seen the movies, or you may already own this. But if you ha if you haven't, not only do I highly recommend you pick up the other two that I reviewed. I highly recommend picking up this one. If you're an SOV fan like I am, you will absolutely adore these. Um, if you're a fan of SOV zombie stuff, you will absolutely adore Zombie Love Slave. That was, it's awesome. And Monster Garage is a lot of charming fun as well. So yes, I highly recommend this. And as usual, you can pick this up at SOVHorror.com. You can pick it up right now. Along with all the other releases I've reviewed. Um, and some of them I haven't reviewed yet. And you can also go to the merchandise store and pick up the t-shirt. It's awesome. I'll have links for everything down below. Um, one thing I do want to talk about. I'm going to be doing a separate review for this, but I still want to show it. Um, is the SOVHorror.com trailer around. This is a trailer compilation of all the stuff that Tony's put out so far. And some that haven't been released yet. Including the one I was talking about. Or the trailer. There is 33 trailers. About an hour's worth. If you're a trailer compilation fan... You will absolutely just love this. I'm a huge trailer compilation fan. Like Mad, Mad Ron's Previews from Hell is one of my favorite just things ever. You will really enjoy this. Um, I will be doing a separate review of this, so don't worry. And I will just list all the trailers. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I highly recommend you know picking that. Up. And I forgot to show the um the thing I did there. 
here is the insert. I believe this is the original insert that Joe picked. It was on Love Slave and Monster in the Garage. Uh, really cool stuff. As usual, um, definitely if you're a fan, please pick this stuff up because Tony works his ass off on these and um, to help support independent artists like him. Um, these movies are a lot of fun, and if you're an SOV fan, please pick them up, because they are just so much fun. And even if you don't like them, you know, you're helping support someone who is just, just trying to entertain you. Like, I wasn't a biggest fan of Horror Girl, but I appreciated the fact that he actually put all that work into putting that out. And I know people I've talked to that really enjoyed it, so, you know, that's awesome. So, yes, definitely, please you can pick this up right now, like I said, I'll put everything down below. Um, as for my next review, I will be reviewing another SOV drive-in double feature from Joe Sherlock. Uh, this one I'm also excited about because they showed the previews on this for it. So, you know, look out for that probably like next week. So, yeah. Um, as usual, if you like my channel, give me a thumbs up, um, thumbs up, subscribe, comment below. What is your favorite SOV zombie movie? What's your favorite zombie movie in general? You know, SOB or not. I'm, I'm interested in knowing. Um, but that's it for now. I'm Jonathan. It's been Beeman Madness. Thanks for watching.